But that's just one part of it. There's something more. I could not rest until I discovered that the Lord Jesus, my good shepherd, was also to be my security. And we read on these verses that he is to be our security. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. There are three portraits of security in this psalm. First of all, walking in the midst of danger. Very important that we learn to walk. The places of danger are often the valleys. The valleys have dusk that comes early and dawn that comes late. And there are a lot of shadows there, places for meat-eating critters to hide. There are cliffs and much foliage. And if the sheep stampede in fear, immediately those who would chase down as prey for them, they would run you down and make you their prey. So you cannot run. It doesn't say run in the midst of danger. Get out of here. Then evil surrounds you and chases you down. But there's a confident pace of walking with the shepherd because he's with you. Nor are you to stop and dabble too long in one place. And there's so much in the streets of our cities and anywhere in the small towns as well that we might dabble our lives away. We might get involved in drugs or something worse and pornography or whatever else. We may see the wrong people and dwell then with the wrong people because we dabble in places of danger. Don't run. Don't rush in a frantic pace. Don't dabble and be still, but walk in a steady pace with your shepherd, Jesus Christ. And then there are tools that comfort. There's the rod and the staff. Specifically, the, the, the rod is used to beat away the sheep, or rather the, uh, the animals that might eat us. But also they are used, the rod is used on bully sheep that may butt us and kick us and harm us. And I'm glad the rod is in the shepherd's hand. But also, and I don't always like this, but it is good that the rod is sometimes used on me, lest I go astray. And time does not permit me to talk about times when I've gone astray this way or that way, and he used the rod on me to discipline. But that's a comfort. To know that if I go, I get out of step, he will use it on me. And then, of course, there's the staff that he used to gently lift. It's like a hook. He lifts the lamb out of the thicket that has fallen, wandered away, and he gently leaves it. So there are tools of comfort, tools of security. And then there's dining in the presence of enemies. You prepare a table, me in the mid, a table for me in the midst of my enemies, in the presence of my enemies. In sheep talk, among shepherds, they talk about the high tables, the high plateaus on top of the mountains where it is green all summer long. And it takes a lot to get up there, but it's wet, worth it because the lower altitude grass has been nibbled down and it's dry and parched. So the shepherd works very hard to carry his sheep, to lead them up to the high plateaus. It's called a table, a table up there, and it's a place for dining for sheep. But of course, the animals that would like to eat sheep, they go up there as well. Nonetheless, because the shepherd is there, they dine in the presence. They eat in the presence of the enemy, secure, no matter where they are. If the shepherd is there, they are safe. But let's expand that illustration a little further and realize that a table as it's used here throughout scripture or anywhere in the world is usually understood as a place of eating and with eating, relaxation. Now imagine yourself going out for a nice supper dinner, perhaps with your husband or wife or a dear friend or whoever it may be. And you've come to relax and eat slowly, fine, delicious food. And you sit there and you are looking through the menu and you happen to look over the top of the menu, but who is there but a person that you recognize, but not a friend, not a friendly face. It's one who has harmed you in the past, who has been difficult on you. And, and there they are, and you wanted to rest, but there is that face, that person. Now, maybe you have unfinished business to do with this person. 
but rather to think that I can be so secure in him that regardless of whoever comes my way, whoever comes in front of me, whether I be eating out or meeting a person on the sidewalk, that I can be so secure in him that I can enjoy the meal just the same. I want you to think about Jesus for just a moment. The Lord Jesus had 12 disciples. One of them was a betrayer. His name was Judas. And Jesus knew from the beginning that Judas would betray him in the end. Yet Jesus, we find within the presence of Judas, ate comfortably, talked with all the disciples, held no secrets, and he slept in the boat while Judas was there. He was not afraid of the presence of Judas. Now Jesus is an example of one who is so secure that he could sleep and dine in the presence of his enemies, those who would harm him and do him great harm. Again, Larry Crabb has put it this way, that life really is an unpredictable tragedy that provides no rest apart from the confidence in God's kind intentions toward us. Well, we can't predict day by day what's going to happen, who we might meet, but if we have the security of the shepherd in us, that is power, that is security. Remember who is with you in all situations. He's the shepherd. Home is where the presence of God is, and that can go with you. He will go with you anywhere you are, in any situation, among friends or among enemies, those who do not like us. Keep this in mind. So this is the second part that gives us rest, security. Now I assume that you've made Jesus your savior, all right? But have you made him your security? Have you specifically taken a moment in your life to realize that you're working for your security, and, but basically you're insecure. You've not made him that one who protects you in all circumstances, in all places. I invite you to, to, to ask him to be not only your savior, but your security today as the Good Shepherd. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.